Hi guys, this is Eric. It's always necessary to transfer the data collected through the MCU to the PC. Also, transferring data quickly is sometimes important. Uh, a lot is possible if the MCU supports native USB. You can make a keyboard or a mouse through the USB HID, and you can use USB peripheral for many other solutions, not only for programming your board. Uh, when it was announced that it supports native USB, I was wondering to see how fast ESP32 S2 would be able to send data compared to the normal data transfer via UART to serial. Uh, to check the communication speed between native USB to native USB, it's necessary to transfer data by directly accessing the connected device from the USB host on the PC side as well. Unfortunately, I haven't prepared a USB host program yet. As soon as this is ready, I will share the results. Anyway, in this video, I will show you how to use native USB and also compare the speed of serial to serial and native USB to serial. ESP32S2 is the most different from the previous model in that it supports native USB. The model I bought is a really good T8 uh, ESP32S2 display model. It's using CH340C4 USB to TTL chip. Its maximum baud rate is 2 megabit per second. Uh, the reason I prefer the display model is that it doesn't require a separate LCD connection. I choose this model because my project is showing something all the time and I need a display. This device includes a DPI switch so that you can change the USB and OTG modes. If there is an opportunity, I think it would be good to do an OTG project. As you can see, this board doesn't have the connector for the native USB, only for the external USB to UART. Uh, to use the native interface, you need to connect a USB breakout. Uh, if you have a USB breakout board to connect the USB port, you can make it easier. Uh, this is a micro USB to deep adapter 5 pin female connector PCB. Uh, connect USB D- to GPIO number 19 and USB D plus to number 20 and also connect uh, ground and VBUS. Uh, this completes the hardware preparation to use a native USB. Uh, now let's uh, take a quick look at the settings for using the ESP32S2 in the Arduino environment. Uh, in the ESP IDF environment, the official blog explains it, so if you need it, please refer to that blog. The link is in the description below. Uh, to use ESP32S2 or C3, you need to install the board. Add the link with your board download information to additional board manager URLs. Uh, now you can install ESP32 version 2.0.0 from Tool Board Board Manager. Uh, after the installation is complete, you can now select the ESP32S2. ESP32S2 has dev module and native USB. In the dev module, all options are selectable, so select this and proceed. Uh, after board selection, all USB related options are disabled. Uh, this is the normal mode for data transfer via USB to TTL. With this, let's prepare for the data transfer speed test first. It's an old form post, but it's about testing with native USB and normal serial communication. In conclusion, packet size and pulling interval are the most important factors for transfer speed. I made my own test environment by modifying this test code. Uh, now the PC and the USB UART of the ESP32S2 are connected. Uh, this is the code for the board rate test. The code is very simple. Uh, when an input is received from the connected device, data is continuously transmitted. I will test the chunk size from 256 bytes. It starts at 256 and increases to 512, 10, 24, something like that. The receiving side continues to read the same chunk size. Uh, serial speed was set to 2 megabit per second, which is the maximum speed of CH340C. Uh, before unloading the program, uh, let's look at the board settings once again. Unload mode is set to UART0. The serial port is also set as a USB serial port. Uh, now I'm able to build and upload the program without any problems. Uh, this is the same as we already flushed the program. Uh, now let's connect the native USB. The white wire is USB UART and the black wire is native USB. When I scan the connected port, only USB UART serial is shown, USB is not added. Uh, currently you have to enable CDC on the ESP32S2 to make the native USB connection. Uh, go to menu, uh, tool, a USB CDC on boot and change it to enable. Then unload the program again. 
Uh, after that, if the connected port is started again, you can see that uh, port name USB modem 01 is connected. The PC recognizes the USB device normally. Uh, this code uses the USB CDC to transmit data. As you can see, nothing special. It's just in sending via USB CDC instead of a serial. I will test this as well, uh, starting with chunk size of 256 bytes and increasing it continuously. Uh, let's try to remove the USB UART connected to the USB 32S2. Uh, then when I scan the port again, there is only USB modem 01. A flashing is possible through the native USB. In tool, uh, change the upload mode to internal USB. And if you change the port to USB modem 01, you can use the same as USB UART. You can see the program being unloaded in the same way. In this way, I showed you how to use native USB in the Arduino environment. Uh, this is the Python code I used on the PC side. I changed the chunk size in the same way here as well. Uh, from now on, let's see the result of how fast data is transmitted with native USB and USB UART. Uh, the Y axis represents the chunk size and the X axis represents the average transfer rate. Uh, UART controls share a total of 1024 bytes RAM and the default size per RX TX FIFO is a block of 128 bytes. And the maximum packet size of CD's class is 1024 bytes. Uh, since the size of the packets is all multiplied by a factor, uh, they are operating the same maximum rate. Uh, the maximum speed of CH340C is 2 Mbps. Assuming 9 bits per byte are uh, transmitted, uh, you can see that the average speed is 1.8 Mbps. Uh, this is also close to maximum speed. Uh, the problem is native USB. The maximum speed of USB 1.1 is 12 Mbps. In this test, uh, the data transfer rate is about 4.5 Mbps. It's about 2.5 times faster than UART USB, but it lacks a lot. Uh, to achieve the maximum speed of USB 1.1, the USB host must recognize it as a full speed device. Uh, when the host application is ready, I will test it again. Uh, this is all for today. Uh, I hope we can create some interesting projects with ESP32S2. Thanks for watching. See you in the next project.